hello everyone in this video we are going to see the options that is available on the IDE so let's go to an IDE so go to tools and script editor it will open your Google Apps Script IDE in a new window so this one that you're seeing at the top is a project name you can just do a double click and edit the project name as you want and if you click on OK the project name will get updated and this one will take you to the dashboard this is a shortcut for google apps script dashboard so if you click on this link it will take you to the app script dashboard that is script.google.com here you can track the number of projects that this account is having and you can just click on it and start working on any projects from the dashboard so i will go back now so now we are on the ide and this one will list the files which is hosted on this project so if you go and create a new file let's say HTML so that will be listed here so all the files that you're working on this project will be listed on the left side bar and this contain a file menu here you can create a new project you can create a new script file if you want so the file format will be a GS and you can also create a HTML file we have already did that so if you want to create a new document spreadsheet you can use the option and if you want to open any particular project you can open that using file open so this is almost similar to this a dashboard and see version history so here you can track how many versions or which means how many changes you have made on this Google project so let's say if I'm adding something just removing something and if I save this one and if you go back to the file see version history you can see that it is showing the two version one is a an empty function another one is the change that we have made right now so if you run this function just and you did something wrong then you can go to this version and click on restore this version will be shown here and rename so if you want to rename your project you can do using this option or you can just double click this one and delete project will delete this project and if you want to make a copy of this project so if you are let's say you want to you are going to do a multiple changes on this project but before that just to be on a safer side if you want to make a copy of the project you can use this option and this save will save your changes uh, alternatively you can use ctrl plus s and save all will save all the changes you have done on different files so for example let's say I made a change here and here I made a change so this asterisk red color asterisk indicate that the changes have made on the file and it's a to be saved so if you go and click on this save all both the files will get changed but if you use the option save it will save only the active file so manage version so here you can save a different version and if you want to add a new feature you can add it on the new version if that doesn't go well you can switch back to the previous version and share so similar to other Google Apps you will have an option to share this project along with other people and project properties so here you will see all the properties related to this particular project for example name and when it was lost modified the project key and this is a script ID for this project you can use the script ID to access this particular project through an API and what is the time zone is working on log exception and scope so how many what it is accessing as of right now so you can see that it is accessing a Gmail and it is accessing document and it is accessing a spreadsheet as well so user property so you can define a property to the project name and that property is called user defined property so you can just click you can just create a property name and value and you can retrieve the property name using a class called property service and script property you can add um, script property which is also like a key value pair and this script property 
lies within the script and the user property lies within the Google user that you have logged on. So when you insert any user property, it can be retrieved from any other script, any other project as well. But if you add a script property, it can be accessed only within this particular project. So there is a basic difference between user property and script property. So let's go to edit and if you did something wrong, you can undo, redo a basic edit option. If you want to select all, you can select all, find and replace. So instead of BR, if you want to change it as P, you can do so. So find will basically find what you have given here and replace will find this text and replace the first occurrence. Replace all will replace all the occurrence and once you're done, you can click this done button. So I have replaced so it shows how many occurrence it has replaced and click on done. So word completion, if you just forgot the method name, you can make use of uh, this word completion. So when, you, when the word completion is on, it will suggest you the method which will come after this class. And the content assist help you with classes which is present in the Google Live script. So, so if you enable the content assist, you can see the list of classes here. And toggle command is to comment the selected portion and uncomment the selected portion. I just click on the toggle command so it commented out and you can use a shortcut control slash so it will uncomment the one. So trigger so basically trigger is to invoke some function when a particular condition met or it can be a time based as well. So current project here how if you click on this one it will show you how many trigger this particular project is having and if you click on all your trigger it will list the entire trigger. So as of now this project doesn't have any trigger. And let's go to view and execution transcript. So here you can see the execution status of the Google app script and logs. So logs is really very helpful for debugging. You can use the logger command and what is what is exactly assigned to the log or what is printed on the log that you can see on view. So stack driver logging and stack driver error reporting is an advanced logging method and execution. So here you can see the status of execution. So it will show you how many time this got executed and what is the start time and how many duration it took to execute the particular function and what is the status whether it passed, failed or it's stuck in the middle well. So you can track everything in the status. So that's basically about an execution. So if you want to sort this file alphabetically, you can click on this one. So this will be sorted. It's already sorted. So if you want to see the manifest file of this particular project, you can click on this one. It will show you a JSON file, which is a manifest file for this project. So compact control, it will ease the coding. So if you're writing a very lengthy function and if you feel that you are scrolling your mouse up and down every time, so you can make use of this compact control. And you can also use the full screen. So everything will be gone and only the ID will be the editor will be displayed here and you can click on escape to come back to the original screen and run basically execute the function so as of now it is having only one function that's why it is listing this function if you have a mini function in the ID it will list all the function and debugging is um, for uh, debug uh, for debug purpose so let's see if you execute that one whatever the values assigned to each variable that will get debugged and you can also test this as an add-on so publish you can publish this project as a web app and you can publish it on the chrome web store as well and you can use it as an api so that uh, an external app can access this project and get an information from the sheet using this API executable and you can deploy your Google Apps script as an add-on so that uh, people can install your add-on on the Google spreadsheet and deploy from manifest if you want to deploy this from a manifest you can use this option and in the resource section you can 
click on the libraries so if you want to import library from someone else google app script or someone else project you can just type the library and click on add those properties will be imported here and you can make use of the functions and the scripts that is present on the particular project on your project so it's nothing but an import how import works on java so cloud platform project if you want to take this to if you want to take this project to cloud you can use this option and advanced google services so if you want to access an api of youtube data so you have to enable this one and you need to enable it on the api dashboard as well once that is done you can click on ok so that you can make use of this youtube data api on your google apps scripts if you don't enable this one it will show you an error and ask you to enable that one so that is the use of advanced google services and here you will get help so if you are very beginner you can use this getting started and there is proper documentation for all the classes and methods and different google products that you can find it here and you can also see the api reference tutorials and support so if you have any doubts or if you're facing any issue you can make use of the support and welcome screen and quotas so so this quotas here you can see uh, the limitation of a google app script how many email you can send using app script and how many url fetch calls how many triggers it will run totally per day so 19 90 minutes per day you can run the triggers for 90 minutes per day so those kind of limitation you can track here so this is all about an google app script id if you like this video give thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye